here we are in Autodesk 123D Design, and I'm wanting to look uh, at uh, more aspects of moving shapes around on the screen and scaling things precisely. And uh, what I'm going to do in this video is try to make a, 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 a series of primitive shapes joined together to make a kind of interesting object, but uh, some, some unusual shapes that might cause problems um, unless you really kind of get your head around all the quirkiness of this software. So let's first of all bring in a box, and uh, I'm actually going to specify this box to have a, a length of 25. Remember that this is scaling actually on the Y axis here. So that should, see that should be snapping to the grid perfectly, and it's not. In fact, let's just clarify what's happening there. Let's come up to the top view here. Again, I'm working with the orthographic view. I'm going to click on the middle wheel mouse and just pan this across. And uh, I've explored this in another video, that, you know, the fact that this block is snapping to the intersection of the grid in the middle of the block. So I cannot actually get that to connect to the origin there with the bottom left corner of the block. So I guess what I'm going to have to do here is put this back to 20 because then it's going to play ball. Anyway, uh, right, okay, so let's, what are we going to do with this? Let's just drop this. Let's drop this here. Okay, uh, now I want to add to this a cone. Let's see, have a look what I'm going to do with the cone here. So if I come up to this primitive shape and I pick up a cone, let's see what's going to happen if I stay in this view. So if I stay in this view here, it's always going to be either jumping on top of the block or going back down and resting on the build platform. And to show that happening, what I'm going to do is just bring it down in this orientation and you'll know, oh, you see, all of a sudden now I'm in 3D, it's it's playing a different game. So it was either sitting on top or it was just kind of half embedded into the block. But now I'm in 3D, suddenly it'll, it'll snap onto the edge here. Okay, so I want to put it on the end here. So obviously this, the solution there would be to come to this, this right view, and that's very strange. And now hopefully, yeah, it will snap to the center there. Now, what happens if I change some of these values? What happens if I put that to five? Does it also snap? Yes, it does. It's definitely snapping there to the center of this design. Okay, that's quite good. Can I also snap it to the corner here? It's doing that as well. So if I wanted to position this, for example, up in this point here, here, now it's not snapping to that, but I can position it to that corner there. And then what I should be able to do is click on this, come to the Move tool. Here's my axes of movement. And again, this is a bit strange because this is giving an X value. And if I, if I think about this, an X would normally be this orientation here. But in fact, if I actually come to this view now, then X value would be this setting here. And that means that that should be the X, but this is actually the Y. Oh, it's so confusing. So <laughs> let's just bring it back to this right view here. Okay, I'm just going to ignore whether this says X, Y, or Z here. And I'm just going to click on this option here. Now, at the moment, uh, it's in this top left corner, and I want it to be so that this top edge here is, is intersecting. Uh, or is a tangent, should I say, against this top edge of the block, and this arc here is a tangent against this side of the block. So, and this is a radius or a diameter, I think it was, of five millimeters, was it? So, let's put this to minus 2.5. Is that going to correct? No, it was a diameter of 10, be a radius of five. So, let's bring that in minus five, and then let's bring this in here minus five. Okay, enter. And that now means that if I right click and move out there, yeah, I've been able to fit that precisely in the top corner of that block, which is interesting to say the least. Okay, so let's now bring a sphere in. Let's have a look. Let's drop in a sphere here. Now I'm just, now I'm not gonna randomly place this somewhere on the grid. I again want to try and position this very precisely. So let's have a look. Um, I'm going to just, Plop it over here. Let's have a look. I'm going to pop it right there. And again, it's snapping to the grid. And let's leave it at that size. Okay, now again, it's resting on the grid there. So now what I'd have to do at this point is I'd have to be aware of 
how far I've got to bring this up and how far I've got to bring this along for it to be sitting right on the end of this tip. So, I want to get that out of the way. Thank you very much. Let's have a look here. I'm going to... Oh, good Lord, it's flying around. You see when I'm right, right mouse clicking here? It's whizzing all over the place. It's much, much easier just to work with this system up here. Now, can I view onto that there? Yes, I can. Okay, so I want to select this shape. I'm going to go to the move options. Okay, right, now we're talking. So let's move that up. I think that's going to be moving up. Let's try 2.5 millimeters there. Nope, it was a 5. 5 millimeters. And I pressed tab rather stupidly there. Let's now view onto the top plane. And let's now click on this option and let's move this back. Yeah, I can see it's 5 millimeters because this grid here is a 5 mil grid. It must be minus 5 though, doesn't it? Okay, there we go. Now I'm going to click on enter. And now I should have that ball exactly on the tip there of that cone. So I'm able to start to position things with quite a lot of accuracy. So I, the, I, the key points of, of this video really are the fact that uh, I think working in a 3D space where you're dropping in these shapes and you're trying to, you know, position things in a way so that everything's oh, clicking together and everything's precisely positioned. I mean, it, it's it's quite haphazard. And then being able to move things to exactly where you want them to be. Look, that's dropped off the bottom there. It's it's really quite complicated and messy. So I really suggest you try to work from these orthographic 2D planes, draw things, uh, drop things in, uh, move things around in uh, with the with the move tool that we get here, um, and that will give us a lot more control over where things are going to appear.